You're watching the Intel Network and Edge V Summit series with our focus today on 5G. Verizon is working with its ecosystem partners to define a 5G network that meets consumer and business requirements. It has chosen specific technologies, partners and deployment models to accelerate the rollout of its 5G core network and associated services to put the CSP at the forefront of 5G readiness. Well, joining me now to explain more is Miguel Caramis, who is Director of Network and Technology Planning at Verizon. Miguel, very nice to see you on the program. Thank you. Good to see you, Guy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How has Verizon approached the design and deployment aspects of 5G, specifically the core network? So for us, uh, we are approaching the build of the 5G core as basically the network that's going to carry us over the next 10 years. So we have strategic aspects that we're trying to address, and then there are more tactical goals that we have in the short term. Strategically, we want to apply cloud native principles to this core. We want more programmability and automation to help our frontline teams uh, run the network in a more easy fashion than in the past. We want to be able to deploy services for both our uh, consumer and our enterprise business units much, much faster than we've been able to do in the past. Uh, we want to be able to move workloads around the network so they fit the different use cases and want to increase security that uh, is one of the promises of the 5G core. Um, now, more tactically, we also want to use the 5G core to start offloading the traffic that we already have in the network today. As, as you know, we've gone to market much like other uh, MNOs around the world uh, with the so-called option 3X, uh, where we leverage the EPC core, the 4G core to handle the 5G traffic. Once we deploy the 5G core, we want to effectively move that traffic over to the 5G core immediately. So we, we achieve two goals. Uh, one is, again, the strategic alignment where the services move to the directional architecture. But in the short term, we also deliver cost savings and efficiencies to the business. How has the core network infrastructure evolved over the years and, and what changes are you seeing today? That's a very good question, guys. So we are uh, deploying the 5G core with two sets of goals in mind. Uh, one that I would say more strategic and one more tactical. Strategically, we are effectively building the network that's going to carry us over the next 10 years. So there are some tenants that we are uh, forcing into our services that we are building, as well as our uh, vendor partners, such as cloud native compliancy, uh, readiness for slicing, uh, automation and simplicity from an operations perspective, ability to move workloads uh, throughout the network and so on. From a tactical perspective, there are also goals they want to achieve. Um, Verizon, much like other MNOs, has launched 5G using the so-called uh, option 3X in the 3PP standards, basically where we connect the new radio to the existing 4G core. Also, the first thing that we want to do with our new 5G core is to move all the 5G traffic that we already have in the network over to the new core. And with this, we'll, we'll accomplish several things. One is uh, deliver cost savings. It's very critical for us that the cost per bid of building the 5G core will be significantly lower than uh, the EPC. And then the second one is consistency of services. So we'll have the 5G traffic already in the 5G core and all the new services that we will build uh, once we uh, deploy support for option two will be consistent with the traffic that we already have. How has the core network infrastructure evolved over the years and what changes are you seeing today? So we build the core networks today very differently than we did 10 years ago. Uh, back when the LTE core was being built, we were purchasing turnkey solutions from our vendor partners, whereby basically we had hardware dedicated to each individual application that couldn't be used for anything else. So that was what was available in the technology at the time, and it served us well. But you would end up with situations where, for example, like an application I would not deliver uh, the take rates that like we were planning and you would end up with stranded hardware taking power, space, and calling resources in the data centers. With the advent of uh, virtual network uh, applications, we're trying to get completely away from that paradigm, right? where we now deploy effectively commodity hardware in our data centers that can be used for different applications. 
And in the same scenario, if a given service doesn't um, get the take rate that we're forecasting, well, no big deal. That uh, capacity that we have in the data center can be dedicated for another application, which, uh, for example, we've seen uh, during the COVID uh, kind of situations that we had in, in the US and around the world. All of a sudden, the user behavior changes, and we can adjust very quickly because it effectively are using software on top of uh, hardware and a platform that's shared by all the different applications. So this is where we are, uh, NFV basically, where we want to go with the 5G core is take it one step further and be closer to what the hyperscalers and the internet has been uh, basically using for the last four or five years, right? So instead of having these applications, big monolithic applications that were forklifted from the PNF world into VNF, we're going for cloud native uh, web scale applications deployed in uh, much smaller fragments and microservices so we can scale them differently. And this is gonna give us a lot of flexibility and how we run the network, how we grow the network, how we react to failures, and basically allow our frontline teams to run this 5G core that is gonna be a lot more complex than past generations in a much faster and easier way. Verizon was one of the first service providers in the world to launch a 5G service. How were you able to launch it so quickly? So that is a really good question, guys. So if you remember um, back in 2014, uh, 2015, there was not a lot of appetite for 5G in the industry just yet. It seemed maybe to some a little bit premature. Uh, it was hard to secure even support on 3PP. So Verizon decided to secure uh, participation from like-minded partners and create the so-called 5G technology forum. Uh, the work that was done there with our partners was basically instrumental. It became the foundation of the first 3PP release uh, for 5G. That is the technology that we brought to market when we launched the first uh, fixed wireless access, the, the famous four cities, and allow us to learn the complexities involved in the 5G radio access, in millimeter wave as a technology, and so on, and then be ready to shift over uh, the 3PP compliant products once they were ready by the industry. And so this is the foundation upon which, which we are building, right? We've been working on 5G for effectively six, seven years. So it's not something new to us. We have a lot of practical experience. And also it's a matter of layering all the other technologies that are available. Like uh, we're talking about uh, uh, containers uh, for applications, uh, web scale principles, and slicing on a solid foundation that we already have. And how critical has collaboration been to enable you to design and deploy the 5G standalone core network? Collaboration is critical, right? So um, we've moved into an environment in which uh, at times, even as MNOs, we are both customers to our vendors, but we are also vendors to our vendors, right? If you think about our environment, Verizon builds its own cloud platform, right? The so-called Verizon cloud platform. We expect our vendors to drop their applications on top of that cloud platform. We need to tell them what the platform is capable of. Uh, we need to collaborate, integrating their application with our infrastructure to make sure that we get an optimal performance. We've had a tremendous collaboration from our traditional application vendors, but also uh, other vendors like Intel, for example. Intel has helped us work with um, our partners to optimize their software. Uh, um, we've been able to collaborate uh, in aspects such as the smart mix of, of loading. Uh, what will the fire edge eventually go, uh, look like? How do we optimize existing applications so we achieve an optimal uh, total cost of ownership for an optimal performance? And what industry challenges does Verizon continue to face as we move forward with the rollout of the 5G standalone core? So um, this, this is a really good question, right? So, we have a tremendous amount of collaboration, tremendous amount of innovation happening. At the same time, we are building something that is completely new in all layers, right? So we have a new generation of platform and infrastructure we'll be deploying. We'll be connecting new applications based on new 3PP standards. We'll be offering services that are unheard of, right? We'll lay the foundations for services we don't even know what they look like yet. Um, some of the challenges that we have this time, uh, it's uh, we obviously have lack of maturity in the standards. Right? 3PP is working very hard and very aggressively to 
uh, finalized the uh, release 16 and 17 will follow. And again, the features that will be there. But this, as we know, is a multi-year effort. So that's one of the challenges. The second challenge is uh, a little self-inflicted, right? We've generated a lot of excitement in the industry with some of the buzzwords like uh, network slicing. And so now we have to manage the expectations from the customers, right? What does that mean to them? What type of services do they want? What's critical for that, that will define those services for them? What type of SLAs are they expecting? And how do we monetize those services? And then uh, the third big item that I would highlight is application and platform integration, right? So as I said before, we are changing both the foundation as well as how the applications work. We need very tight integration between those two if we are to build a core and a set of services that work uh, really well together, right? Like we can um, deploy it and we can operate it and we can support it when things don't work. So that tight integration involves as the CSPs or the MNOs, involves our traditional uh, vendor partners, but also involves some other partners in the ecosystem like uh, Intel and uh, open source code providers. And we need this ecosystem to collaborate right, with that goal of providing best services for the customers. So can you tell me how you're working with your partners and solution providers like Intel to help address these challenges? So Intel has been a great partner for us. And it's, a, it's an interesting relationship in that we don't necessarily procure directly uh, chips from Intel. Right? Like they, they provide their uh, processors and the solutions that our vendors use. Intel for us has become a very valued and trusted advisor. They help us, but they help our application providers achieve several things, right? Understand all the tools in the toolbox so they can build their applications to take advantage of all those capabilities that are available in the Intel architecture. Um, they've also helped us think about what the network might look like in the future as we think, for example, about uh, the, the uh, evolution of the data center from you know, a big space where you have a lot of compute and power and space and cooling is not so much a factor to the network of the future where workloads are going to move very far into the edge. And now you have other constraints there from a security perspective, performance, and even cost. And so our uh, partners are helping us think about what that network of the future is going to look like and how do we get there, again, being very pragmatic in a way that enables the services, but also allow us to deliver those services at an optimal cost point. Well, Miguel, thank you very much indeed for joining us on the program today. And don't forget, you can watch additional interviews and discussions on 5G as part of the Intel Network and Edge V Summit series. But for now, thank you for watching and goodbye.